Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Menchev here uh, with another drought update. I'm going to start with a disclaimer similar to the last few ones. All the rain and the snow that we saw over the last few days is not on this map here behind me. Just so everybody knows, these numbers do not reflect the recent rain and snow, but we're going to talk about them anyway. Very minor adjustments. Severe drought uh, went up by about half a percent. Extreme drought came down by about half a percent. That's why those numbers changed a little. So 45% of the state in that severe drought category, that darker orange color, 27% of the state in the extreme drought. That is that brighter red and the darker red, the highest level exceptional drought, still 13% of the state. Really no change, uh, very just fractions of a percent change uh, from last week's drought monitor. But of course, we got a lot more rain, got a lot more snow. So by the time the next uh, drought update comes out, that my map might be looking a little bit different. In terms of rainfall totals, we're doing really well in Sacramento for this point of the month, about two and a half inches above where we normally are through this point in the water year. And on the or for the month on the water year, October 1st, which runs until September 30th of 2023, we are currently about an inch above where we normally are. So again, some good news, but we need a lot more rain, a lot more snow to keep those numbers uh, in the pluses instead of the negatives. In terms of rainfall, Woodland, uh, really one of the big winners in the valley with over four inches of rain. Lodi, about 2.3 inches, both Stockton and downtown Sacramento in the 1.7 inch range. Modesto, a little bit less towards 1.6 inches of rain. Uh, the rain is good. It does a lot of good for us. One of the things uh, is reservoirs and those reservoir numbers ticking up just a little bit. Shasta right now at 31% capacity, Oroville 29% and uh, Folsom 28% capacity. So again, we need some more rain, need some more snow, but those numbers are coming up a little. As we look at statewide precip, 4.58 inches since October 1st in Sacramento, just over five inches in San Francisco. Uh, similar numbers in Stockton with about four and a half inches of rainfall. Looking at our departure from average, blue numbers are good, that's above. So Sacramento, again, talked about it a minute ago, above average right now to this point in the water year. Same deal in San Francisco, South Lake Tahoe, Stockton, Fresno, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, all to the good. Bakersfield right now about breaking even. Uh, and then with some rain uh, and some snow down in Southern California to start this work week, uh, these numbers will be coming up a little bit too, both in San Diego and hopefully we can get some more rainfall in Palm Springs as well. In terms of snow in the Sierra, man, we got a lot of snow. 69 inches at Sierra at Tahoe, the big winner. In terms of snowfall, Boreal, 60 inches. Sierra Snow Lab, 55 inches from the storm. 52 inches of Palisades, Tahoe. Kirkwood, 49 inches. Lots of 40 to 50 inch range. And again, you do see some 60s up there. One of the things is we had so much wind from the storm that it was a little bit difficult to just go out to a place, stick a yardstick in there and go, this is how much rain or how much snowfall uh, we saw because that wind was blowing uh, that snow really all around. And so some areas definitely had uh, higher amounts because of the wind blown snow and some areas a little bit lower. So even some snow drifts may be higher than, you know, 50 inches or so, even if that's not the official measurement of how much snow was received. Uh, just keep that in mind because of how much wind we had up there. Uh, those measurements were a little bit difficult. In terms of the eight station index for this year, a drought busting meter that now brings that number up to 12.3 inches uh, on the current water year. That's of moisture, not necessarily of snowfall, but that number includes snowfall, but it's the water equivalent. Let's phrase it that way. Uh, that is about 10.8% of the water that we would need to bust the drought, which that number is somewhere around 114.1 inches of moisture. The average water year you can see is about half of that at 53.2. So again, we need a lot more rain, a lot more snow. We're in one of our rainiest months uh, in the valley. December on average, about 3.4 inches of rain. January, a little bit rainier than that. And February, similar, 3.49. So these three months right now through February are three rainiest months of the year. So hopefully there's a lot more rain and snow in the forecast. Talking about our Sierra snowpack, these numbers look outstanding. 200% plus uh, of where we normally are to this point of the water year. Again, that is really good, but the number that you want to keep your eye on is this one, the percent of April 1st average. It's at 42 right now, so we need more. Uh, by the time we get to April 1st, we'd like this number to be above 100%, so we need, again, some more snow because this is the number that really matters. These are inflated because the season is still early. This is the one uh, that we're really going to keep our eye on as the season wears on. So water in the West, we talk about it a lot. We do this every week, right? We talk about our drought. We talk about our water needs, our water uses. 
and snowpack is a big part of that. So the fact that we got a lot more snow is good news. Now we just want more and to hope that that snow sticks around uh, quite long into the season. But we use water for all kinds of things. It fills our reservoirs, our lakes, our groundwater, and then that water is used for agriculture, for household use, of course, ecology. Uh, so fish need water, of course, right? That's a big part of our ecosystem. And then hydropower as well. Uh, for instance, we talked about this a few drought updates ago. SMUD uh, uses cloud seeding technology to try to fill up their reservoirs, which those reservoirs then power their hydroelectric dams. Uh, so we use water in a lot of different ways. And it's still early in the year. We're doing good, but we need more rainfall. And again, it's still a little early to say uh, if we're going to see some water reductions, how much our water allocations will be. Uh, but we talked to some experts. Here's what they had to say. Uh, one of the great quotes that I, I really... I like hearing about a construction worker at um, Shasta Dam uh, who was building the dam. And they, they said, well, what are you guys doing here? And the guy said, fella, we're moving the rain. I think that's a really great, great quote. Adam Nichols, the chief of the Resource Management Division at the Bureau of Reclamation, can tell you anything you want to know about California's water infrastructure. The Central Valley Project is the one of the world's largest irrigation project, if not the world's largest irrigation project. Um, it, it has its origins in the early uh, 1900s, late 1800s, uh, as a state project, which the uh, state of California had passed bonds to try and sell and to build this project. Um, the project couldn't get built due to the depression and uh, the, Bureau, uh, the, the federal government stepped in and agreed to build the project under uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's uh, uh, plan to sort of put people back to work. The federal government came in and we built Shasta Dam and Fryant Dam with the general idea that as it, with the, in the Northern Valley and the, in the Sacramento Valley and the Feather River area, there's a lot more rain. Most of the rain of the state of California falls in Northern California. Um, and there's lots of great cropland down in the southern uh, side of the valley and, and in the southern California. So the idea was to take the rain, move the rain, and uh, uh, put it on crops and places that could be used to uh, grow more crops and, and develop our communities. Construction on Shasta Dam began in 1938 and was completed seven years later in 1945. That's a time when Katherine Hepburn was bringing up baby, California's war effort was in full gear, and the now iconic Golden Gate Bridge would have been considered new. In other words, a time long since past. The intention of the projects uh, at the time uh, may have provided five years of drought resiliency, but projects age over time. We have new expectations for our projects as they grow. And as a state and, and as societal society changes its uh, needs for the project. So, the resiliency of the projects doesn't quite exist uh, as it once was built to. Nowadays, California needs more than just rainfall to manage its water supply. It also takes thoughtful planning and careful management of the water currently on the ground by officials and everyday Californians alike. We're not asking for anybody to cut back at this time. We're, we're asking for folks to remain diligent. We haven't given our initial allocation. So the we're just pointing out the fact that the drought persists. We are still continuing into in a drought situation. Uh, conditions remain dry, and in the event that they do remain dry, uh, we are asking uh, our communities to continue to be village, uh, diligent and vigilant uh, with their water supply and finding ways to make additional and sometimes difficult reductions that need to occur. Um, but until our, our initial allocations, our initial uh, Indications for how much water may be available come out around uh, on or about February 20th. At that time, we'll be able to indicate whether or not there be some cutbacks or, or reductions in quantity to be delivered. But at this time, it's too early to tell. Right now, to solve the immediate problem is you just got to hope for some more rain, more moisture from the sky. And that's going to really help us uh, and as we work towards the future uh, to solve some of our uh, identify and solve some of these long-term drought resilience issues. As we wearily move deeper into a 21st century that is every day looking warmer and drier, we may need more than just changes to our water infrastructure. We may have to change how we think about how we use water in a short-term and in a long-term perspective. There are reductions that could potentially still occur, uh, but people are suffering already. Our communities are hurting from um, the, the ongoing impacts of drought, um, and we 
like I said, the short-term need is more moisture. The long-term is identifying drought resiliency pro projects and programs, uh, including helping build storage projects and uh, groundwater infrastructure that will help us through the next series of years. With all that being said, in California, in this land of extremes, there's a saying, drought often ends in flooding. And I don't want to uh, dismiss that concept of flooding because flooding in the Central Valley and flooding in the Sacramento region is a significant issue. And it is something that we will we live with. And, and, and sometimes we lose sight of that in a drought, but it can change in a heartbeat uh, when we are in, into flood operations.